But uh, I think he looks good as of right now. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but we like to speculate on shows like this. And it begs the question, do you think he could win rookie, over, uh, rookie of the Year over Wemby or Brandon Miller? Yeah, I do. And when I look at Chet Holmgren, the reason I think so is because, yeah, he is going to be in his first season, full season in the NBA, actually playing games. But the benefit that he got over uh, Victor Wembanyama or Brandon Miller is that he had been in the building, right? He started to get that NBA nutrition, that NBA workout program, as we saw there in the video. And for a guy who came out of college where it's like, he's going to have to put on weight on that frame if he wants to play in the NBA. Then he has the Liz Frank injury. But towards the end of that last year, you're like, maybe is Chet going to come back and play? And they held him out. But the skill set is still there, as we saw yesterday. And you add him in with what they have in a guy who was an MVP finalist uh, in, in SGA. Uh, you have Josh Giddy, You have Jalen Williams and Jalen Williams. Like, they've built a nice little core there. So Chet won't have the pressure that the other guys have because of the core they've built there in OKC. But I also think he's going to be able to add and contribute to that group that they have more so than the other two. Yeah, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, though, when you look at Chet, because you mentioned all those names. I think they're all wonderful players. There's a lot of ways to try to split the field. Yeah. And so he's going to have to make sure that when he gets his chances and it's time to really step up and make some of those rookie of the year type plays, that he can do that. But when I look at Wemby, and you mentioned Chet having been in the building for a year and getting adjusted to the NBA game, he was, Wemby was a pro, right? He played pro ball overseas. And so I think, and especially when you listen to him in front of the media, he understands the moment that he's in. He understands what it means to be a pro. And he's going to have plenty of opportunities here because I think he's going to be one of the biggest spectacles in sport this upcoming season. I think he's going to get as much coverage as anybody, and he's going to have all the shots that he's going to want to take. It just depends on how they really want to use him coming in. Yeah, I think the, the, the thing with Victor for me is that and for the other th two as well, mm -hmm. you're going to have the highs and lows no of a rookie year, it's even Chet. But – I think it's how do you manage those, right? If Victor has a couple of weeks where he's not shooting the ball well, maybe he's not playing well, do you let the, the voices around you get in your head of, oh, Victor isn't, oh, the, most, the best draft prospect since LeBron, do those things start to get in your head? And I think even more so than Chet or Brandon Miller, he's going to have to battle that even more so than the encore. I mean, we could do the same thing with Chet, though, because if Chet gets hurt during the season, are we going to talk about, oh, he's an injured guy, oh, he can't stay healthy? Like, he's going to have – I think they're all going to have some of those narratives to fight. We know Brandon Miller, you bring up his name, and mm -hmm. people bring up what's happened to him in his right. past and how his decisions have affected other people, and I think it's fair at times, but they're all battling different mental battles. So I'd be curious to see who can handle it the best because, to your point, I do think that's going to play into this battle. It'll be really interesting to watch 